Hey guys, this is Powell, and uh, this is uh, the 2019 Tour de France Stage 7 Preview. So uh, after today's first stage in the mountains and a brutal climb up to La Planche de Belle, uh, the riders tomorrow faced a flatter stage. They're going south. Um, the first 230 kilometers, very long stage. The first 120 kilometers is uh, a little bit, uh, you know, up and down. 120 kilometers, you got three climbs, you got two category fours, one category three, so perfect for the break. Um, by the way, they're going through Burgundy, one of my favorite regions in France, right? Burgundy, awesome wines. Uh, so the, you know, the views, uh, from the road, from the helicopter, are going to be uh, just awesome. Um, can't wait to see that. I always enjoy that, right? I always enjoy uh, looking through uh, different cities uh, throughout the the race year calendar, the aerial coverage, and seeing all the monuments in Europe, and uh, you know, hearing all that history. So uh, yeah, tomorrow going through Burgundy, ancient region of France. Of course, we know what what's it famous for the most. Um, so, 120 kilometers, first part of it, uh, kind of undulating, uh, hilly, right? There's only like three category climbs, three and fourths, but the rest of the, the initial 120 is really is always up and down. This ends about 120 kilometers, and for 110 kilometers is flat. Question for the stage, right? The brake will go. The question for the stage is whether the breakaway makes it or the teams, the sprinter teams, control the time gap and catch them 20k, 10k before the finish to compete the sprint finish. That is the question. Um, and of course it's a hard answer, right? Uh, the legs are tired after today, okay? 230 kilometers is a long, long stage. However, the next two days after stage seven are absolutely killer days in the medium mountains, right? So uh, I think the stage eight and stage nine, when you bring them together, I think they have like 15 climbs. So uh, uh, the, the pure sprinter teams don't have a lot of chances. And this is, uh, in the coming week, maybe this is their only chance. There's one other stage that they could have a chance in. Uh, that's stage 8, 9, 10, stage 10. But this is the only, probably the best chance for them to win a stage for a week. So this is going to be interesting. Um, so the question is, will the break go? The break will, you know, definitely start. And the question is, how much gap will they get for the, for the first hilly 120 kilometers? And the another question is, will the sprinter teams or who will control the gap and who will catch them? Okay. Um, so uh, tomorrow is going to be a pretty quiet day for the GC guys. They're going to be resting. I don't expect Philippe to come out and try to get a bonus uh, of in the final sprint okay there's no hill bonus uh, tomorrow there's a hill bonus on stage 8 um, I think initially it's gonna be as expected there's gonna be a lesser teams without uh, GC favorites they're gonna be coming to the front uh, there's gonna be heavy French representation I'm expecting again I know I keep saying that but uh, you know I really think the CC guys, CCC guys will come to the fore. Uh, Wanty guys, Confidus doesn't have a, a GC contender, so a couple of their guys will be up there in a breakaway tomorrow. Uh, Direct Energy, the same thing. Uh, Arkea, Katusha, Dimension, these guys should be trying tomorrow. Um, I think uh, guys like Kalmagen, Ofredo, right? These guys have tried before. Uh, Simon Laporte, right? These guys. I think uh, for CCC, maybe maybe a guy like Char could do it. 
or Vishniovsky maybe. Um, these guys are pretty good all-arounders, good rollers, so they can, you know, probably, uh, you know, make it to a good breakaway. Um, who knows? Maybe Tony Martin, right? Um, maybe he gets in the breakaway if he's on form. Um, the, the big question is who will work? Who will control that gap? Uh, when I look at the sprinter teams, I think the first team that comes to mind is Lotto, right? The reason why Lotto comes to mind is that Caleb Ewan has not won the stage yet. So, and that's their major hope for the stage win. So if he feels pretty good, I think a lot of them may go to the front and at least commit a couple of guys uh, to the cause. I think the second big team is going to be Katusha that is going to try to control the time gap between the Pelton and the breakaway for the hopes of making catching them and making a big Pelton sprint finish. I think Katusha... There's two things. Katusha just announced on this Tour de France that they're ending their sponsorship. So immediately you got like 20 guys, 25 guys, including the, the eight, nine guys that are at the tour um, that are looking for what? For work. All right. And it's not like Katusha is full of famous names. So I think tomorrow the guys are going to be on the lookout for Christophe. Christoph has not won the stage yet, but he did really well. Um, I think it was two days ago, right? Uh, he got a second place. So uh, he got a second place, I think it was before Sagan, yeah. So, you know, you know, it, definitely he seems in form, and definitely it looks like he, um, you know, he may do it. I think he, he got it three days ago, right? three days ago on that last stage before Sagan won. So he's definitely on form. Jumbo, will they put men up front for their big German Panzerwagen, right? He has been uh, disappointing so far this year. There have been two chances for pure sprinters. He crashed the first stage and then he got like, I think he got like fifth or sixth uh, three days ago. So he's definitely not firing on all cylinders. So this is his chance. So I think Jumbo may put one or two guys up front to join Katusha and to join Lotto. Um, will Bora chase? Will Bora join the chase? I don't know. I don't think they have uh, uh, kind of any reason to with what's coming up. I think after tomorrow there are three transitional, more mountainous stages where Bora will pick one of them and probably try to do the same thing they did yesterday, drop the pure sprinters and have Peter Sagan compete, compete against likes of Michael Matthews and Greg Von Avermet. Uh, so I think their work, their controlling of the gap will come uh, on stage either 9 or 10, especially stage 9 looks pretty good for Peter Sagan. So tomorrow, I'm not sure, maybe they'll commit one guy to the cause. Um, so, yeah, um, I kind of looked at the end of the stage. I think the way it's going to go is the break is going to go. I think they're going to uh, gain no more than four minutes. And I think they'll chase them down within like 10 kilometers left. I think it's going to be a sprint finish tomorrow. Only the reason why is because there's not a lot of chances for them to really win. Right, and tomorrow is the best chance for a week, and also because a couple of teams have not won yet with a big sprinter, so I think that's their opportunity. I think they're chasing tomorrow. Um, looking at the the uh, last couple of kilometers, there once they get into town, there's kind of a really dangerous turn at 1600 meters. It's 180 degrees right on a river, uh, and that's left. So that's going to be the place, if the main group makes it, that's going to be the place to look for who gets eliminated there uh, and any potential crashes, right? Uh, this, is, this is where they're going to need to be careful. It's coming up again at 1,600 meters, 1 1.6 kilometers before the, uh, you know, the finish. So that's going to be interesting um, to watch, right? Uh, hopefully nothing happens there. Um... My picks for tomorrow. 
right? Ciccioni stays in yellow. Uh, but my picks for the stage winner tomorrow will be between fast sprinters. I think finally the young German gun Gunnewagen wins tomorrow. I think the German Panzerwagen fires. All right. I think it finally fires. It didn't fire first time, it didn't fire the second time, or kind of misfired. I think tomorrow is the day for. Gundenwagen. All right, Gundenwagen wins tomorrow. Hopefully I'm not butchering his name too much. Uh, and I think he'll compete. He survives. The team's chase. And I think he'll compete against uh, Viviani and Caleb Ewan. I think Gundenwagen gets uh, first place. He wins. He gets his Tour de France stage win. Uh, and I think Viviani and Caleb Ewan complete the top three. I think all the usual suspects will be there tomorrow. I think Nizolo is going to be there. He's been sprinting well. Uh, I think maybe Peter Sagan will compete in a sprint, but he's not as fast as the other three guys. Um, I think Michael Matthews is going to be there. I think maybe Van Aert or Tunis from Lotto is going to be there. By the way, it's going to be really interesting to watch that saga a jumbo unfold because now they have like at least two guys if not the third guy they're competing for that top sprinter um you know uh leadership on the team so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna actually watch this tomorrow what is tunis doing whether he's supporting gunde wagen in a sprint or is he actually sprinting on the opposite side of the road again so that's going to be uh, uh pretty interesting to watch um, okay, so this is the preview for the Stage 7 of the 2019 Tour de France. Um, stay tuned for other previews and stage recaps. If you liked the channel, hit like. If you uh, really like the channel, subscribe. I really appreciate it. And please comment, right? Say hi from whatever country you're in. Looking for like a community of cyclists and cyclist fans to really enjoy the tour. All right, and hopefully you're riding. Hopefully you join me on a challenge to kind of uh, lose a few pounds by the end of the Tour de France. Um, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank you.